Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. How are we, everyone? Hope you're well. Shift change. Woo! Bit of sleep. Looking forward to some sleep. Beats Bill. Still got the original. Still goes well. That was a good bit of kit when it came out, the Beats Bill, wasn't it? Awesome bit of tech and it's still going. Can't believe how long ago it was when I got that. I think my sister got me that when she was living in New York. It's, and it still, still works a treat. Mr. Dre, good work. Love your work. Right. <laughs> Last night was a disaster completely. All good, got the video done, done and dusted, I think about 10.30. Beautiful, gonna get some sleep, let's put this up and you guys will get that video, then I get tomorrow, I can start fresh and do all my stuff. <sighs> Best laid plans of mice and men, I think the old saying is. Um, yeah, just fell to tears. Basically, I did an encoded it, had it finished it all off, encoded it. That took like about an hour, hour and a half, hour and a bit, so it was about 11.30. Um, and the, I didn't even look at it, just got it put into YouTube, uploaded it. So there's another 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And it went live and I went to watch it, to share, and I shared it. And then I looked at it and it's red and green splotches and go, I'm going, ah, what's happened? <laughs> um, right out, I've stuffed up, I've done something, gone back in and I did my normal YouTube settings, which I've been doing lately and it's been working fantastic ever since I watched PewDiePie. Um, it was the best tip he's ever given me, was just use that YouTube 1080p settings. Oh geez, all right, oh, well I have to go back to my old settings. Something's going on, it has my computer died finally. I'm just going, oh I've got no computer, that's me done for the swing. What am I gonna do, no computer, what's happened? Went back to my old settings, uh, just went match bitrate. Did it again. Didn't upload it, I went to watch it and then MP4 was red and green and blue again. I'm like, oh no, what the hell? Right, what's going on? So open up Premiere Pro again. It's perfect, absolutely perfect. But this time it was 12.30. Nah, I'm done, I'm cooked. <laughs> I'd be up in three and a half hours to go to work for 12 and a half hours, so yeah. Sorry, I tried everything I could, guys. Uh, I got to work. Um, it's mogo time, I got five minutes, did a bit of a Google search and straight away all this stuff comes up since 2014, all Premiere Pro, red green blotches, red green, red green, red green, just a disaster area. Uh, a ton of people have been shafted by it, uh, thank God, and I know it's not a good thing but thank God all these people have done it because it's sort of easy to find a solution and I was basically, for some reason, I'd say in the last update, when Premiere Pro is updated, because obviously now you do your monthly thing and it just updates itself when I do my automatic updates. Uh, it had reset itself to my the old Metal. So if you're familiar with uh, Apple products, Metal is sort of its rendering or GPU sort of system or graphics graphic system. It helps, it's there to help stuff, but only really helps Apple stuff. So apparently that, if you do do it, if you use Premiere Pro and you get red and green, just go straight into your general settings, change it from Apple Metal down to just, I think it's GCL or um, G GL, Open GL, and then yeah, straight up. So I got home, as soon as I got in, walked in, smashed that, uh, did a did another encoding, um, it was an hour, hour and a half, so I went for my run, shower, got all that sorted and come back from dinner and tickety-boo and I've just finished uploading it and she's up live. So yes, had to resend the Facebook email out to, onto our Nightcliff Tigers fishing page. All good and dusted and it's it's clear. <laughs> In full 1080 glory, she's there. So yeah, my apologies. Uh, yeah, I was not happy, not happy at 12 30 last night. I was like, you mongrels, what have, what the, I was like, well, especially when you're tired and you just want to crash and you're done, you know you got to get up, you're like, oh. Righto, I'm done. 
I can't I can't think straight. It's bedtime. So yeah. Anyway, it's it's had a good we've had a good win. Um, so that's done and dusted. So I thought, well, I'll do a it's shift change tonight. So I'm not going to do. I won't be doing a thing tomorrow. I'll have tomorrow night off, and so there'll be none of no another day another vlog tomorrow night. So I thought I'd come and see you tonight because we've got a heap of stuff to talk about. So let's get into it. Winner, winner, <laughs> finally. Um, <coughs> obviously, Premier Pro, uh, Adobe. Um, it's obviously still an issue. Um, it'd be good if Adobe could come out with just like a Apple settings, like a like a, just a dumbified Apple settings. You've got in there YouTube 1080p, which is fantastic for your thing, and I was doing a fully complex set it all up myself, uh, followed the full greatest way to do it and it took used to take forever it used to take 16 hours to do a video and it was nowhere near it's just the same quality as i get now and now i just use the 1080 youtube one and it's friggin awesome when i do my own code so maybe on the general settings you need maybe like an apple products setting so apple pc user just a thing adobe it'd be good if you could do that because it was very frustrating for me. Uh, I was stressing big time. And by looking on the, all the forums, it has been, people have had to deal with this since 2014, all the way through. Um, and it's not something that just like, you'd find out off Adobe, like this is a general thing. And the, yeah, anyway, enough of that. Now, uh, Canon M50, uh, it's what I shoot on. You know I shoot on the Canon M50, I love it. I think it's a nice, compact, small camera. It's got everything you need. If you want, if you really want to shoot 4K, it'll do it. It doesn't have the autofocus like 1080p does, um, and that, that's what that's the beauty of this thing. The 1080p that Canon does is amazing with the dual pixel autofocus. It can make a massive difference when you can just stand here and do that and know it's going to look well. The image will look good. Obviously, my head's pretty ugly. I can't help that. <laughs> but the focusing is really cool. And it's, it's a big reason a lot of people use Canon and I think it's fantastic. It'd be awesome in the Canon M50 in, that gets released in September, the new one, if that does have 4K dual pixel autofocus because that would be tickety-boo. Plus 4K is a massive file to deal with and a lot of other dramas. But I digress because I wanted to talk about batteries. Uh, Canon M50s, got the, I think it's the LP12s. They're a good little battery, they're cheap to buy. I think I've got three of them. Um, one in, two spare ready to go at all times. So that's, that's all good. But you can, there's a mob in, I think it's uh, Poland, that 3D print a hand body screw-in type scenario for the M50. So you've got a big, like a big grip like a DSLR grip that you can just bolt straight in, screw straight into where your tripod screw thread is. Now they also do a big battery setup in there. Um, I was, I have watched them, I've been looking at them before, I was researching a bit before, but um, one of the great channels I watch on Canon M50, uh, I'm gonna get her name wrong here, I hope she doesn't take it against me, uh, Zdenka Drula. Um, she did. She's really, really, really cool. Does some great stuff with the Canon M50, so it's helped me out a lot. She has, she has actually did a video today on it and talked about these guys that I'd looked at before. And yeah, they've got a really big battery grip in it. You can you get the um, those rechargeable 1860 batteries. You can buy them. You you get them separate. Uh, you buy them, put it in, and it'll give you a, easily a day worth of battery life, like just smashing it. <clears throat> It's a little bit of fiddling around to put it together, but when you don't have to change your battery, uh, that would be, that'll go all day, so that's pretty cool. It's called custom custombatterygrip.com, and they're actually not that expensive. I think the top range one, and that's double handle battery, uh, the new style is $90 US, so it's about 120 bucks Australian roughly. Um, so that's pretty good for like camera stuff. Camera stuff, everything, to do with cameras is expensive for some reason. I don't know why. Um, here comes a company that can prove that it shouldn't be. Shouldn't be ridiculous prices. So uh, you can get a basic handle for 45 US uh, battery battery to cage add-on. 
So if you've got a cage, you can bolt the battery on, and that's the one I'm looking at because I've got a U UL rig on this cage, and if I can put that battery grip straight onto there, that'd be awesome. Um, and I did put in the chat today that I'd, I wonder if they could do some sort of SSD slot in there, or like a put a PC SSD card in there that can go straight in, so you don't need an SD card because you've got to pull it apart to get the battery compartment out. So it'd be good if you could have some sort of extended SSD, so like a 2TB SSD or a, or even a, even a slot at the back for the Samsung T5 or the new T7 that you can just slot it straight in and just come back in straight under and just go straight to SSD. That would be a great little new model for them. So hopefully the guys do that, that'd be pretty cool. But if you have got a Can-Am 50, definitely go check them out over there. Uh, they do, it's like, it's not a, the world's best looking gear. It's even the small rig, it's not, it's probably a little bit level below small rig, but it's 3D printed, it's cheap, it works. Definitely worth an option. It's gonna save you a lot of stress. <clears throat> um, now, a big one out today is a new one I got off the Adorama boys. Uh, tech art, uh, all one word. Uh, just Google that, tech art uh, lenses. And basically, they have developed, and they're out of Hong Kong. I could work that out. Oh, no, it's changed. Out of Hong Kong, they do a, an autofocus adapter for EF mount lenses. So any EF mounted lens, so you, obviously a Canon, your, um, oh, who else does it? I don't, I don't think the Leica is, Leica is not. Um, Sigma, Tamron, Anything that's got an EF mount, and if you've got it existing, and you just say you've got a Sony, Hasselblad, a Leica, um, a Nikon, or Nikon, sorry, um, Fujifilm. If you've got one of them, and you just say you've got some EF glass, but you like the new Fujifilm body and the technology you've got in there, or you want that, or you're a Nikon fan for its color science and its stuff, but you, but you really love the Canon glass because I think. That's what they're banking on, the fact that the Canon glass is the best, which I think it pretty much is from all reports. This adapter, basically, it'll screw on, screw on to your camera. Then you can screw whatever Canon or whatever EF mount lens you have into there. It's inbuilt into this adapter is the, obviously the correct amount of hot shoe points for both the body and the lens. And then that translates the Canon or the Canon stuff to whatever make it is. Um, there's updates, you can update it as well. You plug into it, update it with firmware and stuff like that. So you're always up to date with new software and you will gain autofocus. Everything you have in your lens, you'll now be able to use that on your Nikon, Fujifilm, uh, Hasselblad, Sony. How good is that? Like that is really good. I'm sure there's guys out there and it's um, that are probably hang, been hanging for good glass for their bodies. Say your Sony, um, your Sony guys now will be able to go and get that 28 to 70 Canon monster lens that everyone loves. Uh, probably not that 70 to 200 that's had some dramas. That's been a little bit dicey, but there's some awesome EF glass out there that could you could just easily maybe get second hand if you wanted something different to try out and now you're not stuck on that one lens program and you still get all your autofocus basically everything you get everything you don't lose anything at all so check them out tech art I thought it was pretty brilliant they unfortunately I went on looking for Canon M stuff and nothing nothing for us guys so yeah but I thought it was pretty cool um, it's pretty smart it basically means that anyone can get a lens from wherever no matter what body you're using so you're now not limited to either a manual lens and that was sorry that was the other one i nearly forgot they also on their website they've got a page there and it'll say that they can adapt a manual lens and make it auto now i went in to look at it and the web page where you go the link to it didn't work so something's going on there so I've got to research that a bit more and keep an eye on it. And if you do hear of it, let us know. Um, but I thought, well, that's really interesting. How are they going to do this? A manual lens? Do you like set it up on, set it up on infinity? 
and then just preset your aperture and it'll, it'll somehow adjust whatever to suit your infinity to give you that focus. I'm not sure how it would work. Maybe it sets up your camera to know where you are. You just tell it what settings you're in. I'm not sure. I thought it was a bit weird because to get, get that focus, is, I don't know how you'd change it because it doesn't have anything to control the, the manual side, but they said they can do it, so it uh, be pretty interesting to see if they can. Um, what else? What's next? Now, oh, sorry, prices range. Now, this is, uh, this is the other good thing. For such a, uh, I guess, a, a game changer of what could it, it could be, mean to a lot of people, 249 to 500 bucks US max for the adapter. Uh, then obviously if you need a, another manual lens, the normal adapter to go into that one, you can get that as well. So you can put your M42s and all that, pretty much everything else manual wise, you can then adapt into one of the these autofocus bodies to suit your body. Now I think the Nikon one was the cheapest at 249 and I think I got a funny feeling that will sell heaps because I think the Nikon lenses haven't been that flash in the last couple of years. And you see, I see a lot of videos where they sort of have been saying like, where's our glass, especially the Z, Z range. So now you can use on the Z camera, you can get a Z6 and go and get that um, R gla that EF glass and then use that on the Z. So that will, I think will help out a lot of people, even if they rent it, do that one of those rental things that you can get uh, I think that'll make a difference. You pay the 249 then rent whatever your lens for a couple of months while you're waiting for Nikon to bring out what you actually need. So, very cool. Now, fishing-wise, uh, coming close, only got till May for the Barra Classic. Can't wait. Very excited. Uh, great to have a Bocca bearings back on with us this year. There'll be more coming out with that once I've finished work up this morning. I've got a fair bit to do with our sponsorship deal with them. So I've got, a, I've got a video coming up that I'll be doing with them. So looking forward to that. Um, they're a great company. Definitely, if you're looking to do your reel up or bearings and you want some advice or anything, hit me up below. I can let you know my experiences personally with them. I've had no dramas. Uh, all my reels have got Bocca bearings in them and they're awesome. And they get absolutely smashed during the week of the Barra Classic. So definitely, get a flogging so I can give you some my thoughts and I guess if you want to know some more details let me know um, but new metanium I've got a metanium DC uh, that I sort of run as my sort of a flicking uh, bait caster one of as well as my Calcutta DC uh, 2019 you would have seen or probably if you've been on this channel you probably would have seen the Calcutta video that's probably one of my most popular videos uh, and it's definitely my most popular reel well, the Metanium's long been held as a very high quality reel. Uh, you've got the MGL, the magnesium one, you've, and you've had the DC as well for many years. A lot of pro fishermen use them as their go-to reel. It's a super high quality. Well, the 2020's just been released, and it's a fair, fair bit different. Um, now, it's using that, if you've seen that, familiar with the Shimano reels, Bantam come out with that, uh, the side cover with a little sort of a cutout. Uh, a solid steel cage or alloy cage, but like that solid cage, it's part of their new program Shimano's doing with this solid metal cage. Uh, Metanium's gonna be doing that. It's basically got a, a very similar Bantam sort of a side plate to it. It's now, it's full uh, magnesium alloy mixture, but it's a two piece, two piece. So you've got the one piece frame and then your full magnesium side cover as well, the Bantam side. So that was that's really good. So it's got that, compactness and lightness uh, of that magnesium and the bantam it's got they've upgraded the gearing so before it was just your duralium that light alloy stuff it was okay but like if you got a real fish on it's probably gonna have a little bit of struggle they've now gone up to micro module brass gears the same as my Calcutta um, so that's gonna be a huge difference for that that gives you a heap more grunt when you're really cranking and you got a big fish on that's gonna make a world of difference uh, the spool has been upgraded as well. They've put the 2019 Antari spool into the new Mentanium. So the top of the range reel, the Antari is a $1,000 monster. Uh, that's, that top of the range spool has been chucked straight in there. So 
your casting and everything is going to be equivalent to your Antares. So we already sort of have an idea. So basically they've done a the triple threat. They've got that solid compact body of the Bantam. They've put the drive and grunt from the Calcutta. And then they've put that lightweight, awesome spinning casting spool from the Antares into one unit. This thing is going to sell like hotcakes. Now they've also changed the star drag is now gone to a CI4, which is that, that plastic thing they do. It's supposed to be stronger than steel, rada rada rada. It's a little bit softer. It's got that little sort of smooth, sort of grippy feel to it. And it's actually pretty good when it's wet. So that'll do pretty well. Um, 12 pound line's gonna give you 100 meters. I could not find a price. But uh, even in Japan, I jumped over to Japan and. Uh, the guys who helped me out with the Calcutta got me that before anyone else. Uh, there's nothing on there as well for that, for price-wise. So it's going to be soon, um, next month or two. I'll keep an eye out. When I do see the price, I'll definitely let, let you know. But this reel, if you've been looking to upgrade a reel or you're looking, you've got some old reels, you want to cash them in and then maybe replace them with something, I definitely suggest you look at these. It's, I'd say it's going to be the reel of the year. Uh, with those three things in it, the quality is going to be unbelievable. Having that, and I looked at the, if you go over to the Shimano site, it's got the new catalog and it all explains all about the body. So the bodies are fantastic now, that full thing. The magnesium super light. It's not a real flash for the salt water, but if these guys in the fresh water, I think this thing is going to be just go berserk. So definitely keep an eye out for that. It's going to be a pearl of a reel. And Elgato, if you're into streaming uh, at the CES, they had the new Elgato system. It's a 4K 60S. Um, you don't need a computer. Basically, you can take this with you. It's a portable unit. Basically, plug it into the internet um, and you can basically live stream straight from your gaming console to the web. I'm not sure exactly how you do it. I'm, I'm assuming you're not gonna have your photo in it or you, how that works. Only got a little bit on it, but it looked like a pretty good idea. It looked like it had an SD card slot at the front, so whether you can just record it all and do it that way, but that'll be coming out soon, um, I think later in the year. So that's what um, I Justine was saying. She was pretty impressed with it. She said it's gonna be a fairly good unit. Um, she's got the old 40, 4K 60S. She does a fair bit of streaming, so if she's saying it's gonna be pretty ducks and it's now portable she can just take it with her and stream wherever she goes i think it'll be a good unit uh elgato i have used it unfortunately when i was trying to stream here they change the internet and you get two mega second on site yeah i can't say the company that i work for but it's pretty piss poor anyways <laughs> so yeah check out that elgato if you're into streaming uh it's probably mid-year second half of the year i'd say you'll see that unit drop into the sales so maybe the end of financial year sales you might be able to get a deal on that one cool bananas anyway that's it shift change looking forward to that i am going to attack a milky way tonight or just in the morning so i'm going to do some getting ready for my next big video, which is even bigger than the last one. I'm gonna go through, try and smash all the photos I can on that uh, tonight, try and edit them, get them ready for you. And then I'm gonna get up early and go and get this Milky Way. I've got it all in my head, I checked it on my run. I've got the little, I've got my spots, got my composition all sort of worked out where I need to be and what time I need to be, thanks to that Pills app. And yeah, get there, then I'll, Take those photos and come back to bed. I think so. Anyway, that's it. Mimi beats pill. We're gonna do some photo editing. Woo! Tuesday, shift change on the mind side. <laughs> uh, I need some sleep. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, hope you enjoy the Super Takuma lens review and also my Perth City Panorama. I dropped that in there as well with the time lapse. 804 megapixels. It's an absolute monster. I can, it, it doesn't do it justice on YouTube, but I can literally see people, the chairs in the windows of the buildings by zooming in. It's that crystal clear. 
and it's got that nice golden glow on it. I uh, love it. It's my best panorama to date. But stay tuned. There's, I've got some more coming on that one. Um, see you all tomorrow. So wherever you go on to bed, you're shift changing up at the bar, or you're going to hit the hay and catch that Milky Way Galactic Center. First time in about four weeks, we'll be able to see it. I'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by. I'm going this way. This way. You can go now. Bye.